Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> okay, like we were talking about like the VR thing, you know, and like people getting like really distracted by that. Like, there's, and I haven't read the entire book because when I started, I was too young. But there's this book called The Attention Revolution, and it was basically about using meditation to like fight ADHD and like ADD and stuff. Um, and even when it was written smartphones like weren't really a thing so even then it was like the destructive power of like internet unfocused and now it's like unprecedented like people can't go like a second without it you know what i mean like i don't really know the point i'm see i'm getting distracted right now and sometimes i start to think like i, I think back on a time where, like when i was younger where like say like this book right like i remember a time when i was in daycare where i picked up the book and literally read it the entire thing that afternoon like I had focused stuff was like that, and now it's like I can hardly even. Now you're it. here. You're over here. You're over here. Yeah. You're over here. And I'm like, I'm like, well, I didn't exhibit symptoms like that as a child, so like, why would they be here now? And I really do think it's because like this has been fragmenting my attention. I don't know about you, but like my friend and I, we've been paying very close attention to like you know the screen time thing on here that tells you how much, dude. We've been. That's like, a scary statistic to look at. Dude, yeah, it's like, dude. There's some weeks I look, and this is really embarrassing to admit, but it's like basically like I spent like almost a whole work week on my phone. Holy shit! Like 35, 40 hours, and, like insane amounts of time. Like and I'm like, why? Where did that? I'm somewhere like four hours a day, something like that. That's yeah. ridiculous. You wouldn't think that. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't think you could even spend that much time on it. And it's weird because I was talking to my friend about it yesterday, and I was like, I never feel like. Don't get me wrong. In hindsight, and, and even while I'm doing, it, I'm like, man, I'm just wasting my time. But I never, when I go into it, have this overwhelming feeling of I should be doing something else. Whereas recently, I was telling him, I'm like, dude, like I sat to like read, and almost immediately, I was like, I feel like I should be doing something else. You know, and it's like. Why would I think my phone is more valuable than, like, reading a book? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. feeling-wise. It's, like, even emotionally, it's, like, I'm more attached to that. So, I don't know. That's just been freaking me out a little bit. I don't know if you have, like, similar feelings about it or not. It's weird. I, I think there's a high level of dependency with phones. A scary amount of dependency. And it's, I would argue, almost inevitably just going to get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, try not to think of it like that but i i pretty much agree like i think um because well, i don't know because like okay i mentioned how much time i spent on my phone i don't have social media either so like i'm not on facebook oh interesting facebook. like so like it so part of me is like i have a problem and like i can't imagine how other people are feeling about it because a lot of people are on like Facebook and in Instagram especially like I deleted that because I knew like as soon as I, I remember I got one and I ended up spending like four or five hours like scrolling through shit and I was like this is like too much like I can tell I'm going to be addicted to this mm -hmm. like maybe other people don't get that way about things but I know that I do so like I don't I don't use any of those things I occasionally lurk but it, I don't have social media for that reason and I still can end up spending way too much time on the internet man here's a scary thought you can't get through college without looking at a screen like you you need to look at screens yeah absolutely that is the modern day yeah i don't even i was thinking about that this semester actually with our with our case studies you know like because i remember i showed up to one and i didn't bring my laptop and i was like well then i i can contribute but i can't really work on it and i was like man like pretty much every class is like that this is just the first time I noticed it. Like, if you don't bring a laptop to class, like, you're kind of fucked, like, for a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, I never bring mine. Or very rarely I will I bring my laptop. Yeah. But I, I, those case studies, I would go and Google Drive on my phone. Yeah, which, again, it's like you still needed a screen. You need I some mean. device to be able to contribute. For sure. To pass the class, you need a device. Absolutely. Um, on that note, I mean, do you want to spin into like the sobriety thing or yeah yeah we can just transition right to that okay um funny enough one of your guests uh maddie hendrix i was in a oh you know maddie not not very well but i was in like a group with her um and maddie if you're watching it you may or may not have known this but 
virtually every time you saw me uh, in the group setting, I was drunk like every time. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. Like I uh, like I remember our first group meeting. I brought a flask of Jack Daniels with me, and I was drinking it on the way to campus, like walking there. Oh wow. Uh, would you consider at your peak of drinking? Would you consider yourself an alcoholic? Dude, that's something I go back and forth on. Cause like, and this is something a lot of people go back and forth on. Okay, like so like if you go to like, um, and and for the record, like I'm not I'm not in AA. Um, I've thought about going to maybe help somebody else, but like I. I never went to one myself. But from what I've, um, I've like talked to some people like on Twitter. Um, and read stories like a very common theme is people who kind of realize they have a problem will go to AA, but then they'll end up drinking again. And when you ask them why, it's because they go and they're like, I like my problems were like nothing compared to the people you'll see there. So, like, even as I tell, like, because isn't that kind of the story, goal of AA is to some relatability? Yeah, but the, the problem is, I mean, you'll end up, and it's easy, it would be easy for me to be like this. I could go on, like, the Stop Drinking Reddit forum right now, and I could find stories of guys who drank handles a day, crashed their cars, lost their wives, lost their houses, lost their military career, whatever, like, lost literally everything, and then got sober, whereas, like... And then you're like, ah, oh, I don't really have a problem. Yeah, and it's, and, and to be honest, I remember, um, not, probably about a month before I got sober, a month or two, I was living in, um... Aspen Heights, and I remember I was talking to a roommate, and I was like, you know, I keep getting all these recommendations for <laughs> getting sober, and like, I was telling him, I'm like, I kind of lurk on these forums about it, blah, 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 um, and they were like, that's kind of weird, and then I, when I look at it now, I feel like subconsciously, I was like, I have a problem, but I would read these stories, and I'd be like, no, I don't, like, not even close, like, the, even though I'm drinking every day, like, I'm not, I don't drive drunk, i am shame to say that I have in the past but like to that point like it had probably been like years since I've ever done that mm -hmm. like I, I pretty much like you know what I mean like so like I, it's very easy to think you don't have a problem especially while you're doing it you like can I convince myself that there's nothing wrong which really as I get into like the consequences and like what kind of led me to getting sober you'll see like I think pretty much anyone who's not an alcoholic would be like yeah that's a problem like you should have stopped sooner you know what i mean but then your problem might be a solution to somebody who's drinking a handle a day yeah that's oh yeah that's true and funny enough um i won't say and i, I don't want to say like the name of the location where i work but i do work in a liquor store and this guy came in the other day and like got like he just got like a four pack of like some craft beer and he's like man it's crazy now that like i drink like because i enjoy the taste drink for a different purpose and i was like oh yeah and he's like yeah i used to drink like a handle a day and I remember immediately I'm like how are you even how like most people who have drank that much cannot do what he did like I already know and just stop go cold turkey well no most people have to stop and go cold turkey like most people who stop go cold turkey like most alcoholics cannot go back like the fact that he can drink that beer and not have his life or his addiction spiral out amazes me like I already know like and there's been times this semester where especially when I first started working there I'd be in the beer cooler stocking stuff and I'd pick up an 18 pack or a 12 pack of Budweiser and I'd be holding it and like that feeling would come back of like how it used to feel to walk out of the store with one and I was like dude I could like do this today things are going really well I'm in class I have a job now like and then I'm like no like I know like things are going well so I need to keep up what I'm doing like if I do this I know I'm going to spiral you know what I mean? Like, I cannot just have, and that's, like, a common saying, too, is, like, uh, one is never enough, uh, a thou or a thousand is, like, never, what, whatever the fuck it is. Never mind. <laughs> Let's edit that out. I don't know the <laughs> saying, but, like, basically, it's, like, it comes down to, like, I will not, like, I'm not going to stop for one drink. And I know for a fact I won't, um, like, at all. Um, but, yeah, it's very common. Sorry, to get back to the point, like, it is very common for al alcoholics to get dissuaded by a for that reason because there are people who have stories and of re like suffering that is can be incomprehensible i'm not going to say it's better or worse because i don't know i think human suffering can be rel very relative to people but um it can definitely be discouraging again uh, having acknowledged that i did eventually acknowledge that i had a problem but anyways um 
I guess at the height of my drinking, I don't know. I've talked to my friend about it. He said at the very least, if I wouldn't call you an alcoholic, I would say you were addicted to it, which is pretty much, sorry, pretty much the same definition. So, yes. I would so, if you're addicted, are you able to just go cold turkey? Because I've heard of some physical dependencies where it people are actually dependent. Like, they need alcohol. It's yeah. like the Drake and Josh episode, if you've ever seen that, where he, he uh, quits eating sugar and then he breaks out in hives. Yeah, um, it's like that with alcohol. I have a buddy who works as a nurse, and he said there was a person that was drinking a handle of whiskey a day, and this person had to be given beer or given some form of alcohol, or I, I, I would assume it was whatever he was like used to drinking, but they slowly just take them off of it, so it's less and less dependency. Yeah, you, alcohol withdrawal is like one of the few withdrawals besides... Um, like barbitrate, what is it? Barbitrates and like, be, like benzo type drugs. Like I think Xanax can do something similar. It's like the only drug where withdrawal can kill you. Like al- alcohol withdrawal can absolutely kill you. It doesn't always happen, although there can be some pretty serious. How does it kill you? I you shut down. I don't know. It's I don't know what I don't know what does it. I just know like in withdrawal. Like for example, a lot of people have seizures. Like. Um, which we'll talk about. Th- I had a scare where that's what I thought was happening. That's not what was happening. But um, we'll talk about that too. But um, usually, like the people who die, like they'll go through a process. Like it's called delirium tremens, which usually involves like tremoring, convulsive seizures, um, hallucinations. What's like tremoring? Like the shaking we were talking about. Like, oh the other wow. Day. Um, which of course can can also just turn into an outright seizure, which can again kill you. Um, which I don't really know how that works because I know pe- there are people who have seizures and they don't die. You know what I mean? But I, I don't know. Either way, you can die. Um, but some people have, like, and I've, I've listened to, like, stories on YouTube. It's, like, really scary hallucinations. Like, they'll see, like, demons. Like, this dude was, like, the shadow was, like, talking to him. Like, you basically, like, um, you're not, if you have a drinking problem, like, it's highly advised you do not stop cold turkey by yourself. You go to a detox center. Which, I mean, around the time, like, when I like when I got served or whatever, like, I didn't need to do that. But even now, I'm like, you know, I was also at, you know, my parents' house. So, like, if something would have gone wrong, you know what I mean? Like, I would have been fine. But there are a lot of alcoholics who don't have people around to help them. So, they try to get off it by themselves. And that might be the reason they start drinking to begin with oh absolutely and yeah people start for all, all sorts of reasons i've kind of tried to like figure out like when i did and why I, did. I think it was like a combination of of things but like um it wasn't thankfully it wasn't that i have a very loving supporting family for sure <laughs> which again it's like well then why were you not you know what i mean like were they ever aware of your problem um i i think so i just don't think that they really knew how bad it was getting because i mean okay so like i would go home especially like the last semester this spring semester of last year i would be going home like almost every week um so they'd see me drink because i'd go home and i would just i would be drinking beer like constantly um but i think because probably because i didn't you know like i was still it at least looked like i was doing okay in school you know what i mean it was like there was no reason to stop it you know um, and now and then my mom would be be mad and be like, why are you, like, drinking so much, whatever. But, like, for the most part, it just kind of seemed like, you know, just something a college student was doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, when really when I look at it, like, my mom was right. I was drinking way too – like, that's not nor- – it's not normal. And, like – Did you get immune to hangovers? Or did you still get hungover? What was your antidote well, to so them? You, did you well, just start drinking again? Um – no, there were definitely days where, like, sometimes I would basically start drinking, like, sometime in the morning, but I wasn't quite like that where I'd be hungover and I'd drink to get away. Because the thing is, I I think, like, in a way, it's like, okay, like, there's, like, a common thing with, like, alcoholics where there's, like, there's abusers and then there's, I forget the term, but it's, like, people who just kind of use it to, like, Perhaps like escape's not the right word, but they like use it more moderately. But they, but that's it's it's really not moderate. Like a mild numbing. Kind kind of so like a, an abuser, for example, like as a common term is like someone who there are people who are alcoholics, but they don't. And it's weird for me to think this because I don't normally associate it like this. 
is um, there are people who, excuse me, they may only even drink like once a month, but when they drink, they binge out so hard, it's like basically near suicidal. Like we're talking like people who like end up like fucking up a bunch of shit. Some people wake up in like different states, like drive drunk and crash. Like even though that's not frequent, that's an alcohol problem. Whereas for me, like there were definitely days where like I binged out and like blacked out or whatever but like most of the time it was more like just steadily like drinking but like all day so like I I don't know the thing is I would say like my mental state now when I wake up every day is a lot better so I almost think I was just used to like being in like this weird quasi hungover drunk state all the time yeah I think I was just used to being it all the time that I just thought I didn't get hungover you know what I mean whereas like now I'm like no I probably was like but you know I only waited it so long anyway before starting to drink again or whatever that's why I don't think I could ever become an alcoholic because I hate being hungover Uh, so much (laughs) No, for for sure it's not I'm not saying I'm immune to it I just dislike hangovers so fucking much no I get you and for the record he's hungover (laughs) I am hungover right now which is funny which there are different kinds of hangovers, by the way. There are hangovers where you feel just completely lethargic is an understatement. Just dead. Just dead. You just need to be revived. You physically, mentally, everything, you are just dead. You are pooped. But then there are also like hangovers where, and this is kind of how I felt today, where I felt like my mind's very scattered. Like I'm all over the place. I'm very foggy. I don't feel fully coherent not as conceptual of thoughts and a little bit delayed for sure just mentally overall i i yeah i felt both of those there's definitely an element where you can get like that and that one's definitely preferable i'd say like the scattered than like the lethargic like i don't even want to move those are the worst i had one until 11 p.m back in high school that's pretty extreme dude that's bad stuff I've, the I've, entire next day. Yeah, I've I've I had a few days like that, um, and this was te- technically I would say before like I really had a drinking problem ever. But I I remember it being like that too. The one nice thing was like I don't know it was like probably the best excuse ever to like do absolutely nothing, which is that's kind of like um, not to say like I think people enjoy being sick, but I think some people get something out of at least like now I have like a break you know what I mean so like I treated it like that so like it really sucked but at the same time it was like it was okay <laughs> I, got a, I get a hall <laughs> pass to neglect any responsibility pretty today much, let's pr- go pretty much man pretty much but yeah I don't know I don't know if I'd say I was hungover like if I was it's like I said I just didn't notice because it's like I would only wait till like noon to start to drink again or whatever I mean it was Okay, like, for example, like, I said it brought, like, a flask to, like, that group meeting. Um, there were times the following semester where, like, before, like, oh, I basically, okay, for the record, I basically stopped going to, like, all classes at that point. And thankfully, with some of those, like, they didn't have attendance requirements, so, like, it didn't matter. Some of them did, uh, so I'll get to that, too. Um, but, I mean, I would just, like, I'd study for tests, and then I would... I started noticing, like, kind of early on, I, like, was really having trouble. If I did go to class, like, sitting through it without getting, like, really anxious, like, suddenly needing to, like, use the restroom, my stomach would get really upset, and I was like, dude, what is going on? So I would just start drinking before going. So, like, I would drink before going to take a test. Like, I remember specifically... um, Did you feel that it helped you? Absolutely. It pretty much got rid of all of that, like, almost immediately. Like, Wait, got rid of what? Like, the, the anxious symptoms. Oh, so okay. Like I, I would get, like, I would be, like, comfortable being in class. Like, whereas I couldn't fathom going otherwise. Do you think you were seeking comfort with the drinking? I, I what, do you, what do you think it was? I don't know, man. Like Habits. I think, like, okay, so, like, it started when I got to Aspen. When I, because I had moved into Aspen that year. When I first got down there, um, I remember the first thing I did is I brought one and what is it, a handle of vodka with me, and I remember, okay, so to give some background, like, over the summer or whatever, this was before I, like, really had a drinking problem, like, I started drinking a little more frequently, and by a little more frequently, I mean, like, maybe multiple days a week, I'd have, like, three or four beers, so, like, not really anything, right, 
Um, but when I got down, I don't know what it was, but I had that handle of vodka. And, like, literally as soon as I arrived, I got all my stuff down. I started drinking right away. Um, I don't really know why, but, like, that was kind of, like, the start of it, right? Because, like, pretty much after that, and, like, I have this joke in my mind that, like, my roommates pretty much never saw me sober, like, ever. Oh, really? Almost never. What, what kind of friends did you have? Were they encouraging of that? Um, they didn't know about it. I, like, isolated myself pretty bad. Like, my, my friends, like, that, uh, like, good friends that I have or whatever here, um, like, the only times I'd ever see them, because I didn't live with them anymore, and, like, I don't know, they they had a job or they worked weekends or whatever, so, like, it was kind of hard to see them, would be, like, we would go out, so, of course, it, they would think nothing of me drinking, we're all out, you know what I mean? They didn't know the extent of the problem, basically. Yeah, Absolutely. Were you isolating yourself out of sadness or depression or anything, or? I don't. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hello. Oh, dude, I know you. You guys know each other? I don't know you, right? Where are you in, um, Sherry Cooks? It's like an advertising class, perhaps? I had to, like, take your class. Okay, it was, it, it was probably that. Yeah, again, like, that class. Oh, cool. Thank you. I have a good one. That class was one of them where, uh, th- oh no, that was one I didn't I didn't drink before, it, but I came very close to doing it. That was the previous semester. Spring semester is when like it really kind of got. Was there any mood congruent memory? Because uh, if you study drunk, then you ideally want to take the test a little tipsy at least. Oh, I dude, I have one hundred percent. I agree with that for sure. Like I noticed that with them. Um, I would do that with guitar too, man. Like. Um, I would like play these songs drunk because I was like, well, if I'm like, if me and my friend like do this band thing together, like we're gonna play on stage drunk, so why not practice drunk? So I kind of definitely justified it that way. Um, and yeah, with the drinking thing too, sure. Like, there's no way I was studying about, like I had, I'm sure I was drinking while I was studying. So it probably helped with that too. Um, I still don't think it was a good thing that I would have five or six beers before going and taking a test. You know what I mean? No, absolutely not. But, I mean, I justified it because it's like I got, my, I got, I remember specifically this marketing, like, whatever it is, advanced marketing exam, which those exams weren't that hard, but it's like I walk that and, like, the next day I see 90%. It's like, well, if I can do that shit while I'm drinking, then, like, there's no problem. Did I'm you like that challenge? Of, oh, oh, for sure. I took Oh, I could do, you, you're doing college? Yeah, I'm doing it drunk. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm I, doing the entire thing hammered. I took a certain pride in it was also not like that really only lended to me thinking i didn't have a problem you know what i mean i see that as a common response with stoners in college they're like yeah i'm able i it's like yeah i smoke weed every single day and i get straight a's it's like there is some there's some like hubris pride in there for sure for sure um yeah it's like i can perform with the handicap i wonder how crazy my potential is if i was doing this sober yeah. But I'm not going to. Yeah. See, that's the part where <laughs> they don't add that second part. But, like, if you did, it's, like, it is almost – it's almost sad in a way because you're, it's, like, you're purposely handicapping yourself. Like, you're purposely uh, uh, almost downplaying, like, your potential like and, like, taking pride in that. And, like, I feel like it's, like, a form of denial if you are doing that. Like, you're, like – you know, it's, it's kind of like the people who'd be, like, oh, well, I'd be, I would be good at that if – like blah 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 like I could totally do that if I wasn't XYZ you know what I mean it's like the same thing like or somebody somebody's playing you in a sport and they're like yeah I see I'm beating you right now I'm not even trying my hardest that, that's what I mean yeah it's like that and it's like there's nothing really to be prideful in it like don't get me wrong I look back and I'm like oh that was kind of like I guess like it's cool that I was able to do that but it, it doesn't mean anything like none of that no one's in really impressed you know what i mean yeah good point like no one <laughs> like if i'm like oh yeah i got an a on that test because i was drunk and like, and, <laughs> and, and, and like maybe it's like it'd be one thing um like th- a friend of mine literally that day he had done the same thing and i was like oh well if he does it then i definitely don't have a problem and like but then it's like okay put think of it this logically he's about to graduate this is the first time he's ever done this you've done this multiple times this semester and you drink every day like they're not even comparable but i was like oh dude it's what you do man like, uh-huh we're just smarter than everyone else it's like yeah okay dude <laughs> okay now what made you want to stop okay so like 
So, like, I had a kind of, like, a wake-up call um, around, like, Easter time. So, like, okay, I, I talked about, like, the anxious s- symptoms with that class, right? But around Easter, uh, it was Easter break weekend. I drank a ton the day before and took phenobut and, like, drank probably even more than, like, my normal amount. And the next morning, I woke up feeling great, right? So, like, I go to Price Cutter, I do some things, I come back, and I'm, like, I'm telling my parents, yeah, I'm going to leave soon, I'm going to leave soon. Um, but then all of a sudden, I, like, I start feeling really weird, and I don't know what it is. Like, I'm, like, oh, maybe I'm just hungover. Well, two-hour drive's not that bad. I'm going to do it anyway. But I just, I start driving, right? And all of a sudden, like, I, j- I really start, like, spacing out and, like, getting, like, these racing thoughts. I start profusely sweating, and, like, all I can think about, like, it was, like, impressing on my mind pretty much like 10 minutes i think i was like on what is it chestnut expressway and then you go on 65 i was like I, i'd maybe just gotten on the highway 44 to go to st louis and like this was already happening where i was like man like i just need to turn around and lay down like i can't do this but i i somehow like kept pushing on i'm like no i'm gonna be fine i'm gonna be fine and like i just keep sweating i get to like Rollin, i see like those uh billboards where like they have holiday inns and i'm like i was like seriously considering i'm like dude like i need to like just go check in somewhere and lay down like i can't keep driving like all these like thoughts and like pretty soon like i don't know if i had the shakes or not because i never looked at it but i start getting this intense like do you know like the feeling where like your leg or foot falls asleep Mm -hmm. it was like that but like radiating like shoulder to hand like everywhere and it was becoming hard to even hold the wheel and i was like i need to do i need to get out all I, and then so, like, half your body's numb or just one of your arms completely? Well, both of them were, like, tingling, like, as if they had fallen asleep. And it was, like, becoming hard to, like, hold the wheel. I was, like, freak, And I was, like, dude, am I, like, are they seizing up? Am I going to have, like, a seizure? Like, you know what I mean? Like, all this shit's hitting me because I don't know what's going on, right? All I can think is it must be the alcohol. And I remember thinking, I, I was, like, I need to just pull over somewhere. I had had, like, a little, like, duffel bag like this. And I had... Um, like a 12 pack or no 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 the remain like maybe like three three beers no no that's right three beers from like the 18 pack the day before like left and they were sitting there and all i could think was like i need to pull over and i need to drink them now like i need like around like oh so you're thinking this is alcohol withdrawal yeah and i was like i and it was just like i can't handle this feeling right like this is the only i was like convinced this is going to make it go like this is the only thing i can do to make this go away like i I was, like, really considering, like, I just need to get somewhere. Like, I was, like, I'm going to go in and in. I'm going to check in. I'm just going to do whatever it takes to get a room. As soon as I get to the room, slam the beers, and all of this will go away. Like, I was, like, seriously considering this. Like, it was that, like, intense of, like, this fear. Like, I was, like, I'm going to, like, like not die. So like, what did you end up doing? Did you pull over in Nala? Um, no, I kept going till I got to about um, a little bit past St. James. So this is, like... Really this is about a, almost two hours, like hour and a half, two hours. It's like two hours. It was like maybe an hour and ten minutes. I was probably an hour and ten minutes from, like, my house at that point or, like, from wherever in St. Louis. So, like, I made it pretty far. But like, so I, that's the thing. I was, like, convinced. I'm, like, I can make it home. And then around Raleigh, it was, like, maybe I should stop somewhere. But then finally, after I got past St. James, like, the tingling was, like, becoming uncontrollable. And I was, like, sweating. And I was freaking out. And I'm just, like, I can't, like, I give up. I pulled over to the side of the road. I like, pick up my phone and I'm like, I'm like finding it like hard to even like type shit in. Like as I'm holding it, like I literally think I'm like gonna drop it. Like I can hardly hold it. And did I you die. ever consider you might die? I don't know. I didn't think. I I mean like kind of. I was worried I would crash. I wasn't really worried that like it was gonna kill me. I was worried about the seizure thing though because I was like this tingling. You know what I mean? Like I didn't know what that was. Um, shit's going on in my body that's that I'm not controlling. I don't know what's exactly. going on. Exactly. It's like my hands are freezing up and it started getting in like my legs a little bit. That's like really when I was like, okay, like this is not this is like serious. Like this may mer- w- sorry, may very well become like a seizure or something cuz I don't know what that is, right? So I dialed 911 and I'm just like and I was like I was like so Im- like at the time I was like so afraid I wasn't embarrassed, but once they arrived, I was like I was so embarrassed about but i was like i think i'm going through alcohol withdrawal i i can't drive like i'm like stuck like i told him where i was and like i just had to like wait there and like as i sat there very very slowly um you just pulled over on the side of the highway 
Yeah, which is pretty dangerous too. <laughs> and uh, very slowly, the, t- the tingling got like a little bit less intense. Like I could start to like move my hands normally again. Um, Were you still sweating at this point? Oh yeah, still prof- profusely sweating. And like I was just talking to the 911 operator, and she's like telling me to like stay calm, whatever. And she's like asking me like, is it getting any better now that you're pulled over? And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. It's like alcohol withdrawal or like some kind of panic attack but like i've never had panic attacks before so i don't really know what to expect here and like eventually like a highway patrol officer arrives i get out of the car and like we walk over behind i guess katie's patrol car um and like i kind of try to explain it to him he's kind of dumbfounded because he doesn't really know what's going on and then the ambulance shows up and i go inside they check like my blood blood pressure blood sugar level which surprisingly the blood sugar level wasn't bad which really surprises me because it, typically with like alcohol stuff like this your blood sugar can get really fucked up um that's actually part of the reason like some of those like tingling sensation can happen like you can go i don't know basically people who drink a lot have a lot of blood sugar problems so somehow it wasn't alarming but like they were asking me it's funny they asked me um who the president of the United States is, and I was like Donald Trump, and they're like, we asked that because we need to know if like someone's having like brain, like issue. You know what I mean? I don't. That's not exactly relevant to the story, but I thought it was interesting. I'm that like, is interesting. I'm like, oh, it's funny. I'm like, well, I'm glad I was able to remember that. Uh, <laughs> but then like they asked me, they're like, how much do you drink a day? And I lied and I said like, I don't know, probably around like eight drinks a day, which is not true. It was more than that. And. Um, and they were like, what do you drink? And I'm like, beer, like whiskey, I don't know, kind of whatever. What? And they're like, what did you have last night? And I'm like, beer, and I had a lot of rum, blah, 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 blah. And they're like, you know, you like, you can't just stop drinking. And I was like, I, I know that, I'm sorry, whatever. And then finally, like, I gave them my parents' number, and they had called my parents' house, and then my dad was calling me, and I just told them, I'm like, yeah, I'm in an ambulance, like an hour from the house. And, like, they gave me, like, a choice. They were, like, you can either come to the hospital with us, we'll run tests, blah, 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 or you can just go home with your parents. And, like, I decided, I was, like, you know what? The feelings are kind of going away. Maybe it's, like, not a big deal. I'm just going to go back to my house, which was the right decision. I It, it went away that night. I felt terrible. The Probably avoided a fat bill, too. Absolutely. Um, having that said, if someone else is in a similar experience, I would honestly still advise that maybe you should go to the hospital. Like, Especially if you drink, if you drink a lot, I don't know. It's so these are th- like this is the physical manifestation of alcohol withdrawal. Pretty much, it. Yeah, I think that's, that's what's insane. Going on. Um, so that was like whatever. I'm gonna call that like a panic attack or like an episode or whatever. That was like a wake up call, and I was like, okay, I need to stop. So the next two days, um, I was sober, or whatever, and I felt fine. Like I didn't have any more like withdrawal issues. I was completely calm and then Sunday Easter rolls around um, and I'm still doing fine I'm at this family event I'm not even like I like I wanted beer but it wasn't like I feel like I needed or anything but then it was like offered and I was like you know what maybe that was just stress because at the time I was like basically failing all my classes because of this so I was like maybe it was just that right it wasn't alcohol so I started drinking again and the next day I drove back to campus and like the drive was fine so I was like oh you know what it's just a one-off thing like it's no big deal so the semester keeps going on, so I just keep drinking or whatever, and we get to this, the last day of, um, last final. It's my art final, which, funny enough, Maddie Hendricks was in that class as well. Oh, wow. Um, and she may or may not remember this, but when I got to the final, I was, like, hands above my head, like, tripping out. Like, I, so leading up to that, I took the bear line to get, to get to to get to that art building whatever it's downtown i don't know if you've ever been there um, yeah brick city yeah that's right and uh i remember like feeling kind of weird walking to the bear line or whatever but i was like that's ah, whatever but then as soon as it started driving there that feeling came back and i was like what the fuck is happening again and then like pretty soon it was like you know like the 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 tingling thing like throughout my arms was happening i was like i started freaking out again i'm like dude like there's no way i'm gonna be able to do like this final like this but i was like wait it out wait it out and like i get to class and like i get out so some of it starts to fade away so it's definitely was getting triggered by like being in like that closed space but like it still wasn't really going away and i just got in um and like the final started and i like didn't 
go in to like take it, I would just go to the bathroom and like either drink a ton of water or like try to use the restroom or like try to throw up. Nothing was really happening, you know. I did that like six or seven times. It was probably like half an hour in. Pretty much everyone was done taking the final, and finally, I just go in and like blitz through it, and I'm still like profusely sweating and shit. And um, I was just I just became convinced. I'm like, there's no way I can um, I can leave. Like can't drive right now i didn't bring my car and i'm like i cannot get on the bear line again i was like convinced i'm like if i get on there again something horrible is going to happen right and i can't walk either even though aspen's only a mile away and i've walked from downtown drunk many many times i'm like i can't i can't do it like i'll i'll trip out or something so like i called my friend and i was like hey dude like i really need you to come pick me up right now and he did and like that was kind of like the second wake up call and not the last one either, unfortunately, to say it. You would think, like, after this happening twice, I would have stopped drinking, right? Because mm-hmm. it's, like, it's pretty obvious. Um, so this was all, like, the day, uh, pretty much the day before graduation, actually, because graduation was that Friday, or sh- what my graduation should have been. So he drives me back, and I tell him, I basically told him, I'm like, dude, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I have, like, this panic disorder or what, but, like, it's, like, really fucking with me. And it was... Like, pretty, I, I never wanted to admit that to him, but, like, he was like, dude, it's cool, like, people feel that or whatever, like, it's all good, dude, like, you don't have to explain your stuff to me, whatever, like, he was very kind about it, and he dropped me off, so, like, that day was probably the first day since Easter, since that Easter, those two days that I was so, that was the first time I was sober since then, so, like, one day, and I was, like, all day, man, I would, like, try to, um, I was, like, drinking Pedialyte Light and, like, trying to sleep, but every time I would, like, fall asleep, my muscles would, like, extend. Like, all of a sudden, like, hip, they're called, like, hypnic jerks. And, like, I, I would just wake up, like, right away. Because all I wanted to do was, like, sleep it off, right? So that, like, kept happening. And then finally, I fell asleep. Woke up the next day. And my parents called me. They're like, yeah, we're down here, blah, blah, blah. We're going to do graduation. And I haven't told them that I'm, like, failing my classes yet. And, like... So I'm like, all right, I, you know what I mean? Like, so like all this shit's going on. Like, not only do I feel that, but like, I've failed these classes. I'm not actually going to graduate. Them and my parents are down here, and I haven't told them any of this. I haven't told them what's going on. Like nothing. So like, and I'm like, well, fuck. Like whatever. I'm just gonna. I don't know. I'll figure it out, right? So I, wa- I remember I walked to walk. Did you live? I see you have the Aspen shirt. Did you live there once? No. No. Okay. Well, do you know like how like close it is to like Steak and Shake and uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Walgreens. So I was like, all right, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna drink some of the more Pity Light. I'm gonna go get like a Steak and Shake burger, and then I'm gonna pick up beer. You <laughs> know, and like I went, I went to um, get Steak and Shake, and like that feeling was there again. Like I'm waiting in line. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't wait in line. This is fucking stupid. Like so, I leave. I go get beer, and like chips or something. And then my mom's like, go pick up your gown. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go pick up my gown. So I go to the bookstore, and I get to the bookstore, and, like, the same thing. I get, like, this kind of, like, it doesn't last, but I get, like, that rush of it, and like, an adrenaline rush all of a sudden as I'm just standing in line, like, a complete adrenaline rush out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? Like, there's nothing here that's scary. Like, why are you feeling this way? Um, so that pretty much happens on and off, and then pretty much, like, an hour before the business school is supposed to have their graduation. Like, my mom calls me. Um, I don't know if she was, I think she was just asking if I was getting ready, and I'm like, I can't sit through the ceremony. And she's like, is it because you've, like, failed your classes? And I was like, yeah. And she's just silent, and she's just like, I'm going to call you back. So, like, that was when, like, <laughs> I finally admitted it. Although, to be honest, the I will admit, even if I had graduated, I, there's no way, like, from how I felt that day, like, there's no way anyway I could have sat through the graduation. So I almost told them that. I was like, I'm just feeling really, like, anxious. Like, I can't. Like, I'll freak out. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, you know, I, I was almost. Did you just not want to admit to your parents? It was, it was that. And it was like, it's like I said, if I had graduated, there's no way I could have sat through it anyway. Like, I was just, I couldn't even stand in line without starting to feel really weird. Mm. So, like, I couldn't imagine sitting through, like, an hour and being perfectly still you know what i mean because it was like how i felt like because even like before right i was having trouble going to class so like you'd think graduation ceremony is not going to be any better right um but yeah i definitely didn't want it but like i finally did and like uh, eventually like she called me back and was just like come on they were staying at that 
excuse me, University of Butler Hotel, and they were like, come over here. And, like, I went over. We, like, argued about it for a while, but, like, I don't know. Um, we kind of worked for, through it. I still didn't really tell him it was because of, like, drinking or whatever. Um, I don't know. I don't really remember very much from the conversation, but, like, that night, they were like, well, we're still here. We can still go out to dinner. And I was like, I can't go out to dinner. I, I still felt like if I go out to dinner, like, something's going to happen, man. So, like, I was like, you guys can just go. I'm just going to stay here. And, like, I just laid down, I think, what the – were the Bruins playing? I don't know. There was, like, there were, like some hockey stuff going on. I just, like, laid and watched that and was like – the feeling started going away. They get back from dinner, and, like, I go down there. And at this point, I had had – I won't – not a recreational amount, but I had had some – like, a family member of mine has prescribed – Xanax, so like I told them, I'm like, I'm freaking out. Can I have some? You know what I mean? So, like, I had some, and like that kind of helped. But even when I got down there and I just ate my sandwich in the lobby, my arms kind of started feeling that seizing up thing again. Even even on Xanax, and like, I think it's because I, w- I didn't drink that day. I didn't drink anything that day. And I think that's why. So, like, even then, in like this perfectly safe private place, I'm starting to feel weird, right? Um, but that still wasn't enough. Like the next week, I went. I went to like the lake with my family or whatever, um, and like drank plenty. And like I remember, I like drank before we got in the car, because like I was afraid of the car ride. Like, and it's it's weird to think about this now. Although some of that's still present, but like I was like so afraid of like this three hour car drive, right? Like, I can't take that. Then I got there, and, like, the boat rides were kind of freaking me out. You know what I mean? But I like, kept all this hidden. And it was, like, even it started to get to the point, though, where I would drink a bunch of beer. And, like, I remember we went on this boat ride to, like, a restaurant, and I was still uneasy, like, even though I was drinking. And I was like, dude, this is, like, getting out of hand. Like, I can't even stop it anymore. So, like, that was kind of what started leading up to me being, like, maybe I really need to stop. And what finally did it for me is I was sitting in my basement. This is probably, like, another week later. So maybe we're, we're like, two or three weeks into summer now. Um, Probably two weeks. And I was in my basement just, like, drinking beer, watching my brother play some video game. And all of a sudden, the adrenaline shock just hits out of nowhere. And I was, like, I was feeling great that day, like, perfectly calm. Uh, And it just hits out of nowhere. And I get really uncomfortable. And I just go, dude, I have to go upstairs. And I just go upstairs and lay down. And that hypnic jerk thing starts happening again where I can't. I'm having trouble Does the hypnic sleep. jerk happen just once, or is it just, like, a repeated? It, it happened multiple times. Like, it'd be, like, as soon as like, – I'm sure you've probably felt the sensation before where, like, maybe if you've been on rides that day or, or maybe not, like, but, like, when you try to fall asleep and um, you, like, feel that feeling where, like, suddenly you fall and then you wake up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was, it was like that, but it would just be, like, one of my limbs would just shoot out and, like, wake me up wake me up like prevent me from falling asleep so that happened like multiple times and, you like, shoot do you ever like shoot spider webs out of your wrist huh do you ever shoot spider webs out of your wrist no what do you mean just like i don't know it just reminded me of like spider. oh like, like that like, extension ah. no i <laughs> wish it was that cool like that no man um uh, but another oh this is something i forgot to mention kind of up to that point too i started getting feelings like in my feet where i would like freak i would like think they were gonna cramp up any second like just curling my toes i would think they would just shut um i don't know it was like this weird fear i started having man it was it was all weird man interesting um but like that night i was like dude like it's one thing to like be afraid in like the car in public and all these places or whatever but like to start feeling this like when i'm in my house is like that was like crossing the line so i was like i'm gonna stop and I was definitely very afraid to stop, but I was like, I have to. Like, I can't. So how'd you go about this. stopping? I just. This the story needs a good ending, I, and I know it has one. It so. does. No, um, <laughs> um, I, I just stopped. Like I the just next, went cold turkey. I just went cold. Like the next. Like now, keep in mind though. Like at the time, like because it was two weeks in, I didn't have like. Um, my old summer job, unfortunately, had closed by that time. So I didn't have, like, work to go to yet. So, like, I didn't have places to, like, drive or anything. Like, I would basically, I was, like, 
basically, sh- I, um, I think this helped because I think had I had other responsibilities, this would have been a lot more difficult, mm-hmm. at, at least in, in initially. Um, I just stopped cold turkey. Like, bas- like the next day, um, I was just like, I'm not going to drink today. And uh, I don't know. It was like I was just very con- – I was, like, very convicted, even though I was con- – even though there was like some conflict in my mind that was like, well, maybe you don't need to quit. Maybe you shouldn't quit. If you quit, blah blah blah. Like you're not gonna be able to do X Y Z. Blah blah. blah. Like I, I had a lot of justifications not to, but I was like, I can't go on like this. Like this is not, this isn't going to work, right? So I just stopped cold turkey, and like that was not. It was easy in the sense that like I didn't have a ton of, like withdrawal symptoms on their own. You know what I mean? Like just being around my house anymore like that slowly kind of started to go away um but that's not to say like the panicky thing with like the cars and stuff didn't right away like that took pretty much the entire summer of like working through to get rid of because i remember i think i was like two weeks probably like two weeks sober which at the time was like blowing my mind i'm like i don't even remember the last time i'd been sober for more than three days and i had to drive my sister somewhere and I drove her there, but on the way back, like, those feelings came back. But I just kind of, like, remi- I, it was a little easier to deal with because I was like, dude, like, you're, you're sober, you're cool, like, you're safe, you're just driving, like, you can, like, just keep driving, like, you can just push through it or whatever. I got home, and I was like, it, I don't know. It definitely made me very afraid for a little while to, like, leave, like, the house and drive because I was always like, those feelings are going to come back. And even this morning, that stomach thing I was happening was was almost exactly like that, just without the accompanying tingling and like burning sensation so like even coming in h- here this morning I was I would just have to remind myself like it's cool you know what I mean like it's you're so like it's it's all good you, you it's good dude like relax. it's it's not what you think it is it's yeah. not the those severe of symptoms yeah pretty much um just like self-talk and like calm like you know trying to keep things calm um so like it just took that was really the big thing I think after about a month um a lot of that got easier to deal with. Um, but one person, like, I had not told about it was one of my best friends in St. Louis. He, like, was continually reaching out to me to hang out. And, like, finally, I would just ignore it because, like, I didn't want to admit that I had, like, stopped drinking, you know? Because, like, we would drink all the time together. So I was like, dude, it's funny because it, this is very common among people who quit. They're like, I'm going to lose my friends. And they, you build up this thing where you're, like, convinced people are going to think you're, like, a pussy or, like, you suck or, like, they're going to turn on you. And I was convinced he was, like, going to be, like, pissed that I, or whatever. And it's, like, I told him. I, like, just, like, sent him this long message. I'm, like, dude, sorry I haven't been getting back to you. Like, I've just been, like, dealing with all of this shit, like, basically trying to get sober. I've been sober about a month now, and things are getting better, but, like, it's still really new to me, and I was afraid to tell you about it. And he, the first thing he said was, like, he sent me this gif of, like, this Buddha guy meditating, and he's, like, you are enlightened. Like, he was, like, (laughs) he's, like, dude, I've been meaning to, like, cut back myself. Like, you've pretty much done, like, something I wanted to do. Like, don't feel bad. Like, he was, like, nothing. So he had the opposite response of what you were thinking. Yeah, he was, like, so encouraging. Yeah. Um, Which definitely So let's let's dive into that a little bit. I'm curious. Like, what what do you think it is? You've built your social circle around this one activity of getting drunk. Um, And then you quit drinking, and you're, like, yo. Nobody's going to want to hang out with me because everybody's going to want to drink. Yeah. Well, that is something that I think people do go through because there are, like, there's, like, your friends and then there's, like, you know, people do it. Like, I know, like, I have acquaintances who, like, pretty much all we had in common with was, you know, we'd go out together. Mm-hmm. So, like, it, it, it would seem logical that, like, they're not going to be, like, supportive or, like, they're not going to, I'm not going to see them anymore. And I don't because I don't drink but it the th- the part where like it was illogical was like this was someone who like we definitely like we got along because of like our values and like we were like better friends than just we're drinking buddies but i guess because for a while we would drink a lot together i was like convinced mm. i'm like oh that's like what's t- holding us together right now if that goes away oh no you know what i mean which in hindsight was stupid but i mean dude it's like did you ever have the thought know. that if you like if your entire bond of that relationship is based on alcohol, then you're like, oh, there's fake friends. Who cares? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like, 
That'd be scary to like face the truth too. It's like, oh shit, that wasn't even my real friend dude, the whole time. He just wanted to get fucked up. For for sure, dude. Dude, that's something I've been thinking about a lot. With okay, at the liquor store, there's like couples who would come in and like they're definitely couples who like drink a lot. And sometimes I thought about that. Um, I'm like, man, like some couples, like I imagine if one person got sober and the other didn't, like they might see through and see like I've been like with you know, like, the wrong person this whole time. Like, the only thing that really kept us together was drinking. So, like, I imagine sobriety for a lot of people is pretty eye-opening and not necessarily in, like, a pleasant way. Like, it can I'm sure it can be pretty painful for, for, like, relationships, for sure. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. Like, I didn't, have, I didn't realize, oh, our entire friendship is drinking. Because it wasn't. Like, I was just on the phone with him for two hours yesterday. Like, we talked all the time. Like, uh... So like you probably realize you have some closer friends than you you oh, probably for, for anticipated sure. too. Oh, absolutely, dude. I was like, I was like, yeah, like if he's that supportive, it's like that's definitely something like I'm blessed to have. Like I'm very grateful for that. Um, Hell yeah. Because I couldn't, I could not imagine like so, <laughs> I don't know that would suck. Someone especially like trying to get sober like, and then realizing like all their friendships were like drinking ones. At the same time, it's positive because it's like that's gonna incentivize you to start that. drinking again. Yeah, for sure. Like lon- like loneliness and stuff. I'm sure it wouldn't be easy to deal with. Thankfully. And then you that. want something to kind of appease the loneliness, and you're like, yeah, maybe I'll have a beer. For sure. Maybe I'll reward myself with and a, a beer. Tr- that turns into you know, six. But, um, so yeah, and then, um, one of the classes I failed, and I didn't, I didn't admit this to our group early on, but the cla- one of the classes I failed was Coleman's class, like the class we're in right now, because I, oh, really? I, I, because I just never, you know, like there's a hundred points of participation, there's all the case studies and, uh, individual assignments, right? So all of that adds up to 200 points. I got maybe 20 of those 200 points so like at the end of the semester even if I had gotten 100 percent on the final I would have still had an F basically like it was just because I just never showed up and did anything um so like over the summer I retook some I retook classes and did really well in them which was definitely because I, I think if I had been drink when I was drinking too I was very even more bitter about school than perhaps I can be naturally mm-hmm. um but, like, I retook classes, and I did really well in them, and I was like, okay, like, this is going well. So, like, I'm here, and I'm only retaking, taking, like, so much anyhow, like, finishing up. Um, like, there is a Did you just never go to class? Because I was, uh, I was kind of assuming that he, the class participation, which is, like, 100 points, almost the fifth of the class, I'm assuming it's going to be, like, if you go, he's probably going to give you some good, gra- good well, you grades, can, good you feedback. Excuse me. 80 points of them are you just showing up. Like, on the days that it says lecture, reading, um, training, those are days he gives you 10 points each, which I think adds up to 80 points total. Then the the extra 20 at the end is just, like, how much you participated. So, like, I guaranteed myself that I got, like, none of it, like, at all, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's where that comes from, though. It's, like, it's it's not just, like, if you show up, yeah, you, you get the points, basically. Okay, cool. So I only missed two classes all yeah, semester. No, you're, so yeah, like, you're fine. And like, cool. I, I, it's funny. <laughs> I, mean, I missed like a few, but like nothing to like hurt my grade or anything. Unlike, unlike before, right? Because <laughs> yeah, it's like, especially this class, like it's.